Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I have no special technique to share with you today, but I do have a really fun project. So this set was really created just for fun. Now I'm going to be using some of the new products from Concord and Ninth. This one is the greatest hits. I want to make those little records and the record pocket. And then this one is the little crate. So those are the couple things out of their latest release that I'm going to be using today. I thought they were super cute and could not wait to create with this. So the first thing I'm going to be using is the greatest hits. This is the die collection for the greatest hits, and it's going to create that pocket for our record. Now I have the wee cardstock that I need to trim out. So I thought I would show you the brand new trimmer from Tim Holtz. I love this. Now this was gifted to me by Simon Says Stamp. So I was really excited when this came in the mail. It's got two arms, one at the top and one at the bottom. So no clumsy attachments that I need to worry about. It has a rotary for a blade instead of that guillotine cutter, which again, super thankful for because I really, I did not like the guillotine. I just felt very unsafe with it. And there's also a flat edge at the top and the bottom. Once again, I love that feature as well. Now this cuts super slick with cardstock. I have tested it with my chipboard that I use for my um, stamp storage and magnets and it cuts really great there too. So while I was babbling away about that amazing paper trimmer, I went ahead and die cut that pocket from wheat cardstock twice because I'm gonna make two of them. I die cut the full circle out of black glossy cardstock and then there's additional circle. Now this does not cut anything. What it does is it emboss lines into your record. So all you need to do is just line it up to create that even margin and check this out. It is so realistic. I thought these were just adorable. Anything miniature is just super fun and adorable. So I did that on my second record. And now for the inner parts of the record, we have two dies. There is a bigger one with that small hole. And then there's a smaller size with a bigger hole that's going to layer on top. So the bigger one that has the smaller hole, I die cut twice from white cardstock. And that other die that has the larger hole, I die cut from uh, honeysuckle and stardust. I'm going to attach these two colored pieces of cardstock to my white pieces just using some liquid glue. You can see how it lines up and you can see the white edge in the inside and the outside. Now I did mine out of white and colored cardstock, but you could also stamp on that inside piece I think would look really cool or you could flip it. You could have white in the inside and a color going around the edge. Now I'm just taking those pieces and I'm adding them to the center of my records, just lining up the holes, which I found to be pretty easy. And I even showed my husband who thought these were pretty neat. And if I could have found something like a lightning bolt, I would have totally added that because that just goes back to the 80s bands that we love. Now I'm going to cut up some strips of cardstock to decorate the front of my pocket. So I'm going to be using um, honeysuckle, sprout, stardust, oceanside, ballet slippers and aqua sky and I cut two strips out of each color so I can decorate both. Now on these pockets you're going to see there are some score lines. There's two flaps on the side and then a score line in the middle. So you just fold along each of those score lines. Now I will fold them and then I like to reinforce that fold with my bone folder. Kind of fold in those two side pieces cuz that is going to be what we adhere this pocket together with are those two side pieces. So once I fold that in, once again, reinforcing it with a bone folder just to make sure they're nice and crisp and uh, flat, then I'm going to go ahead and decorate this before I glue it together. I wanted to decorate first because I need to trim off the excess and I didn't want to risk cutting an actual folded line. So I thought it would be really neat to just kind of have these strips of cardstock going across the front, kind of a... Uh, incomplete rainbow, but I think it's a pretty fun color combination. On this one, I have it ending with the blue. And then on the other pocket, I'm going to start with the blue. So I just kind of changed up the order of the colors on the front of the pockets. Now, once I have all of that done, which I'm just adhering with a tape runner, I'm going to flip it over and just trim off that excess with my scissors. This side is not so bad. It's the other side that I was worried about with the flap. So 
I just kind of folded the flap in a little bit and then trimmed off that excess on that side. Now I can kind of fold this up just to show you how it's going to go. I always kind of look at it the way it's supposed to go before I adhere anything. Now I'm going to take some double sided tape and just put it along the inside of those flaps or I guess it's the outside of those flaps. And I'm going to do that to both of them. This is some score tape I think I bought like maybe five years ago. I found in my drawer when I was crafting. So I figured I'd better start using it up. Now I'm removing that release paper just using my craft pick. And then I'm going to fold those to the inside because this is what's going to attach to the front. So I'm going to fold that in. I'm kind of holding it down a little bit. And then I'm going to start pushing down or applying pressure towards the bottom and then just slowly let that go down and then secure that down, kind of push it, really make sure that that double sided tape is stuck to our front pocket. So how super cute is this? I just love these little records in there. You can give as a gift. You can keep on your desk as a decoration. There are many ways you can decorate your record, but I really wanted to play with that crate. It just kind of went hand in hand, but I do think those record pockets can be used on their own. Now for a uh, sentiment first, before I get to the crate, I needed to do a sentiment for the front of these pockets. And for that, I am using the greatest hits stamp set. I have these two circle sentiments. One says you rock. The other says thank you. And I'm going to heat emboss. So I'm going to prep it with this new anti-static powder tool from Simon Says Stamp. Little miniature powder tool. Another super cute miniature. I guess I should name this video all things miniature. So I prepped that with that anti-static powder tool. And then I'm inking up the sentiment, sentiments using a VersaFine ink which will stay wet longer. It stamps really, really well. Uh, it's kind of a thicker pigment ink, but I have a lot of black area here. So I am going to stamp it again just to make sure that I really have that good coverage, especially on that one that says you rock. So I'm going to ink that up, stamp that down, and then I'm going to apply some clear embossing powder over the top. This is just going to make it shiny, which I thought would tie in really well with my record that I die cut out of that black glossy cardstock. Now, another thing I wanted to try, I just purchased these and received them are these little like finger guards from Tailored Expressions. I can't remember what they're called, but I will have them linked down below. They protect your fingers so you can hold your cardstock while you're heat embossing. And that way you're not burning your fingers or getting them too hot. So I really wanted to try it out and they work. They protected my hands. But then again, I wasn't like super close to my heat gun, but I thought they were just kind of fun and I wanted to give them a try. So once that was heat embossed, I'm taking the coordinating die and lining that up over the circles. I'll do it for both of them. It's going to leave a nice white border around those sentiments. But while I was die cutting, I went ahead and die cut two circles from black cardstock and I'm going to layer that behind my records. The black glossy cardstock kind of had a little bit of a bend to it because of those embossed lines. So I just wanted to kind of reinforce the record a little bit. And I also die cut out two circles um, for these sentiments to reinforce that as well. Now I'm adding some thin white foam squares to the back of the sentiments just to kind of give it a little bit of lift on the front of my record pockets. Now, I'm sorry if I don't have the correct uh, name for my record pockets albums. Um, I did used to listen to them when I was younger, but I may not have the correct terminology. So I'm just popping these on the front of my pockets and then I can slip my records inside and just, I just love them. I think these, I should probably send one to my mom. I bet she would get a real big charge out of these. We used to listen to records all the time when I was younger. Now there was one that I created off screen beforehand to kind of play around. And this one I wanted to show you, I die cut out the stars and music notes that are on that die set. And I did that from some matte gold cardstock. That one also the center of it, I stamped some butterflies. So just some little additions you can do to kind of spice up your record a little bit. And now we can move on to the crate. So all you need is just this one large die to create it. It's going to die cut everything out for you. So I die cut it twice from some honeysuckle cardstock. And this also has some score lines that the die provided. So I'm going to go through and score along all of those lines. You're going to notice that there's two flaps that you're going to want to fold in because this is what's going to 
connect our crate once we have it all together. There's also some additional pieces that it die cuts, um, which is going to be the trim or the reinforcers that go along the top of the crate and the bottom of the crate. So these are those strips. There's one that is plain and one that has that little oval at the top. That's the piece that goes at the top. Now this also has scored lines that you're gonna wanna go through and fold along those so that they are ready for us when we get uh, to putting our crate together. Now I had one last important piece that I forgot to fold and that was actually on the crate itself. So I'm gonna go through and fold those along those lines on both of them. And now that all of my lines are scored and folded, I'm gonna open these up. So I'm just gonna flip it up so those flaps are sticking out. And once again, I'm gonna bring out my double-sided tape. So I'm adding that tape to all the flaps. So there's two flaps on each piece that we die cut. You're gonna need those two pieces to actually create a crate. Now in the bottom of one of them, so on the other side, you're gonna to wanna to add either some liquid glue or tape runner. I'm using my double-sided tape. This is the bottom of the inside of your crate. So I'm taking the second piece and I'm folding it up just because it's easier to attach this, but you wanna make sure the other kind of grate like pieces of your box are on the opposite sides. So you can see I have two on top and then my folded piece is gonna have the two on the side. I'm bringing the one side up a little bit to align that and then push down to adhere my two pieces together from the bottom. So I hope the visual is a lot better than my explanation. Now I'm removing the double-sided or the backing of that double-sided tape, and I'm just gonna go around and fold up those boxes and connect each corner. I'm continuing my way around that crate, just removing the backing of that double-sided adhesive and attaching those corners, and just make sure to press those corners together really good, make sure that that's all attached, I'm kind of squeezing mine or pinching it a little bit just to kind of give me that form a little better. So now on to our borders or our reinforcers for the crate. Now this one has the ovals, which is going to go at the top. I'm using liquid glue because it's kind, it kind of has that give to it where I can wiggle it around. Now we have this little flap on the side that you're going to fold over the corner. Those ovals line up. Now on that last edge, I'm going to leave that up a little bit. I'm not completely attaching that down. And the reason for it is because when I bring this second one in, I'm gonna take that smaller flap and I'm gonna tuck it underneath the end. Now, I probably could have lined these all up and maybe just made it one long piece, but I didn't think of that at the time. Not sure it would have worked, but that is a thought. But I tucked that smaller end underneath the previous one that ended, and then just going around and making sure that those all lined up, held it with my fingers for a little bit, and then I can move on to the bottom portion. Now this is the one that is just a straight strip all the way around. It has some really cute stitching detail on it. And I'm gonna do that the same way where I leave that one end just up a little bit. And when I bring in the second piece, I can just slide that smaller flap right underneath that end. Now I may need to add maybe a dab more glue just to make sure that it's all stuck together really well but this really does reinforce your box. Now you can put treats in here, you can put bath bombs, you can put your little notes, anything in here. It is just the cutest little crate. I was so excited putting that together. There are a bunch of little things on the die set that you can do to decorate your crate. There's little tags, there's die cut sentiments. I just left mine plain for right now and I uh, just tucked my records in here I just love the look of this. It's so fun. These are really great where I can give it to a teacher. I think she would really get a kick out of it because she's kind of an 80s fan too. But I also kind of just want to keep it on my desk because I think they're just really fun to look at and play with. So that finishes up my card video for you today. Just having fun and making this cute little project. I hope you do find some inspiration in it. Or if you're looking into these products, I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and see you soon.